this is courtesy of The Verge. So um, Elon Musk was on Clubhouse maybe a few weeks ago. Um, he did this really cool show on there called, I'm going to say it's called Good Time. What's it called here? Da, 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 da. Clubhouse, what's it called? Yes, yeah, The Good Time Show. Yep. So he was on the show called The Good Time Show on Clubhouse, um, which is hosted by a husband and wife team, Siriam Krishnan and Arati Raga Rama. Rama Muruti, Ragma Muruti. Um, and it was a really, 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 and I guess one of the persons, one's a, one of them, I think the husband, is now being newly um, announced as a partner in the um, Mark Andreessen's kind of group thing, A16Z, right? So, the reason why I bring it up, it was a fantastic interview, maybe one of the best interviews I've heard from Elon in a while. And it kind of is funny because this comes off the back of. I guess there's been some backlash when it comes to Clubhouse with some journalists, especially New York Times ones, who've basically made it their mission to counsel and bring down some of the more, you know, um, allow some of the more prominent voices within tech, um, within startup industry, because they feel like they're toxic and they're bros and they're not doing enough inclusion and all this sort of stuff. I don't know, whatever it is, they're just anti-capitalism. I don't know, who cares? But regardless of the nature, it has kind of breeded a plat it has kind of breeded an environment in terms of media where there does seem to be a bit of an adversarial relationship between some of these really amazing inspirational figures that lead these companies, um, and some of the interviews I've been having, which kind of leads to a shitty interview for people like myself to watch and listen to or read. Um, I think the the journalist Nelly Bowles that's kind of um, going out with uh, Barry Weiss for the New York Times, a lady who I think is most kind of partly responsible for Jordan Peterson's, uh, you know, uh, breakdown because she was the person that kind of led that whole enforcement monogamy thing in 2018. I remember she read the article for New York Times and basically, um, you know, read basically a hit piece on Jordan Peterson, even though she acted like he was her friend and she was writing a good fluff piece on him, went on tour alongside with Dave, Dave Rubin and Jordan Peterson and ended up kind of stabbing them both in the back. Um, and I remember she said something on Twitter, which she ended up deleting about, oh, um, this Elon Musk interview on Clubhouse was a real softy, softy thing. Um, journalists need to be in a room so they can press the in the, in the the person that's getting interviewed a bit more and get some really hard hitting questions instead of kind of lapping them up and just, you know, being their cheerleading. And I thought, no, actually, this is why people kind of are more prone and are more kind of drawn to podcasts because in the most part, a long form podcast is very difficult to have like an adversarial kind of, you know, um, I'm trying to take you down interview when you're sitting down with somebody for an hour or so. Um, you know, you might kind of come into it with one idea and then you come out of it with another because you've got time to actually sit down and speak to the person um, hear them actually flesh out their ideas, uh, speak about their experiences, where they're coming from, how they think. And it kind of gives you a bit of a an, an idea and again most podcasts i listen to the best way to actually make your own mind up on a person is to actually just let them speak you see that happening with candace owens or she appeared on joe rogan right a lot of people kind of were able to kind of suss out that she's a bit of a dumb dumb because joe rogan just basically let her speak and kind of twist us off in circles you saw the same thing happen with dave rubin so this idea that you have to kind of be um have a combative relationship or interview in order to get the best um out of it is really dumb i've never really understood that i kind of i've really i've always hated it which is why i've never been a really big fan of the car of swishes of this world right who kind of sits there in her avia glasses and has this weird persona that she's the brittly um journalist that's going to push back and give these guys a hard time it's like we don't care we're here to find out about what new products they have maybe kind of answer some questions that we had burning in our heads and just hear them speak because you, you rarely kind of hear them speak in that fashion but I thought this interview was really good. Um, the version of a really cool roundup regarding all the things that happened. I'll quickly read that here. Um, it says the media venture capital wars are buzz this weekend for the advance of during and after the appearances of um, Musk in a not so quite one-year-old audio social network musk is not the uh recluse he gives interviews to more or less regularly but his arrival on clubhouse served as a validation for the company and the idea of live interactive audio streaming generally now i already said before i'm not really a fan of clubhouse i'm not i haven't really spoken in one room i've listened into a couple of things here and there i don't like the idea that i have to kind of tune into it like i'm tuning into radio even though again i was a big fan of radio back in the day the idea that i have to kind of 
you know, set my clock and find out what time it is in America to be in these rooms is just annoying. Um, it's the reason why I kind of switched over to podcasting for the most part because you can listen to it on demand whenever you want. But hey ho, you continue. Um, da, 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 da. Despite beginning at 1 a.m., EAT must room quickly hit the clubhouse cap of 5,000 concurrent listeners, as did one overflow listening, um, hosting a broadcast of the appearance, and then another overflow from a room after. All day long, hustlers and hackers sought to get into the action, hosting pre show discussion, post show recaps, and in one at least a cash giveaway sponsored by square um on clubhouse mask appeared on the good time show um a roughly three week old late night event hosted by the husband and wife team i mentioned before guests and co-hosts on the show often include partners of andrews and horowitz clubhouse lead investor and most prominent public cheerleaders i've known of krishnan and, and roots since 2020 2012 sorry when i was interrupted um their coffee day at the cream in san francisco it's continued blah, blah blah the tone of the show is lightweight by design successful tech people getting together after they put their kids to bed to discuss the news of the day without ever being too critical of anyone involved it's a, a, in, a, um, in this aspect the show is totally consistent um, with the mission of Andrews and Horowitz laid out last week in this blog post announcing that it would create its own media company aspiring to be the go-to place for understanding and building the future for anyone who's building making curious about tech and that's I think is the most kind of wholesome and great bit I love about the show and I love about that interview in general um, again it kind of just as a reminder of kind of what I enjoy those interviews when you've got these sort of individuals who are kind of you know great but also maybe a bit flawed sometimes the flaws in them are basically you know reported already by most parts of mainstream media you need to provide them I feel like with an opportunity or a space that they can go to <clears throat> where they feel comfortable enough to speak about the good because the bad is always going to get highlighted by whoever wants to highlight them and it's interesting that the more that we've kind of seen Clubhouse be prominent, the more we've seen the more controversial people you would imagine in society kind of flock to it because they've seen it as a safe place for them to kind of be able to speak freely, which is kind of, you know, um, contradiction when you imagine what Taylor Lorenzo was trying to do a couple of weeks ago. But essentially, it's kind of proved um, the fact that a lot of these big figures in tech or people in general have kind of grown to distrust mainstream media and they're slowly but surely pulling themselves away which is why you're seeing a lot more of these big people talking on places like twitter you know putting up instagram lives you know going on podcasts whatever it may be they want to go directly and speak directly to their people to their audience or to people you know who are fans of them instead of you know using the media the mainstream media as a platform to speak because you know your words are going to get twisted 